all the work of getting these lambs born and taking our blood samples, and you certainly don't want to not pack them right so they don't get to the destination in good shape. They need to still be chilled, so you, they need to be stored in a refrigerator. You don't want them to freeze, but you don't want them to get too hot either. Okay, so once they're taken, they can hang out in a refrigerator for quite a while. Um, it's a DNA test, so it's, it's stable, as long as they don't freeze or get too hot. So you certainly don't want to put them on the dash of your pickup, um, and you don't want to put them in the freezer. One thing that we've kind of learned over time is the tubes all come to you looking like this with the stoppers up. And um, we did have a little bit of problems with breakage. We sh have been shipping them upside down. And that's, that seems to keep the bottoms of the tubes, you know, there's cardboard in here, but that's just kind of an extra layer of protection. So one other thing to mention at this point is we need um, a written record of what samples are in here. You can't just send them to us and expect us to be able to read your handwriting exactly correctly. So we do like a written record, preferably an electronic copy. So if you can enter all your numbers in a spreadsheet um, and then um, email us the spreadsheet, then we can have a paper copy and the electronic copy. And they do not have to be in numerical order, but they should, the paper list order should match the order that's in the box. And it's always right, nice to tell what corner of the box you started from. So, okay, so we, here we have a box of samples. If you have um, not ripped up the little plastic that comes around the box too much, you can use that to repack them. So like in this instance, it's not in too bad a shape. You can put that over the top of the tubes and then you can either rubber band or tape or something to, to hold that down. Because you can imagine if you've gone all this work and we end up receiving broken tubes, you have to go back and find those animals and re-bleed them. And if you haven't saved the little plastic wrapper that comes with the tubes, you can use cling wrap and just that wraps them up good, but just we want them secured in the box. Okay, so we've, we've inverted the tubes, we have a list of all of them, and then we can go ahead and put them in our cooler. Next, we, we want to ship these on, night, on ice. We will ship them overnight, especially in the summertime, um, on ice. And in the winter, you probably want ice packs in there too. And if you can kind of wedge your samples in there so they won't move around on you, that's, that's the best. I can fit a couple ice packs on the side. I'm going to put one, maybe two on top. But then you can add some, some packing material so those, sh those tubes don't ship during transit. And, and there you go. There's 200 tubes packed, ready for shipment. And then, of course, you want to use your strapping tape to seal this box. But this is a container that will go through the mail as is, and it's good to go. So let's say you don't have a whole box of 100 to ship, um, and you have just a few that you want to test. We'll, we'll, send, we'll package those a little differently. So you want to make sure the tubes are separated by some packing material. They're glass, so you don't want the glass tubes to break in shipping. So just kind of roll them in a paper towel or, or something like that. And then they can go in a, they can go in a baggie. And then it looks like we have a couple left over, so we'll kind of do the same thing with them. Just roll them up. And, and once again, we do need a list of these samples. If it's hard to read your handwriting, we want uh, typed or neatly handwritten. OK, so now they're in a little bag. And this is um, a box probably most anybody could come with, up with. If you, if you have a shipping box and we want to insulate it, you can go to Walmart or any place and just get styrofoam sheets. You'll need six little sheets cut to fit your box. So you've got a bottom four sides and then a top, and you've got your own insulated box. Now there's not very many samples, even though there's a small box, there's not a lot of samples. So we want to um, put a little packing material in there so these don't fly around. So we can, and put it in as small a box as possible because, you know, FedEx or UPS, whatever shipper you use does charge you by the size of the box. So, and, um, and then it stays insulated better. Okay, so we're gonna put, actually I think what I'll do if I have room, I'm going to put a couple freezer packs in there, ice packs in there, one below. And uh, looks, looks like I can fit a second one on top. Okay. And then if you, if you need any more packing material just to, to kind of wedge everything in place. 
that's what we have right there. You put your lid on, close up your box and tape it, and it's good to go. You got a nice little package. Now, if you if you're close enough, you can hand deliver them. Um, that's just fine. Just keep them, you know, in your own personal little cooler or something to keep them cool in transit. Once again, we don't want to freeze them, and we don't want to get them too hot. Okay, but now they're ready for shipping, and they probably do need to go overnight just to be safe. You don't want to go to all this trouble, all this expense, and have your samples ruined when they get to where they're going.